says everything is in your own interest. Man amila salaha fal nafsi. Whoever does good does it for himself. Man asaa and whatever does the opposite, he, he does it for himself. The more of book up is on Nami till I beat. You're not unjust to anyone. Do it must be because there is merit in it. It must be because there is goodness in it. But usually, culture like religion are not instances of philosophy that can easily be understood. Face understood. So you have to really struggle to make um, people um, just to the light, just believe it. You know, religion starts with belief. And then um, it goes with penalty. So it is not possible for anybody to ordinarily, you know, believe in something and then Uh, follow rules without penalty. So we, we are not now coming into a brief um, discuss on ritual. Allah sent the prophet with three sets of rules. Uh, the predominant rules that we know today pertain to rituals. But this came later. The rules about rituals came and started with Salat. Although it is the first rule, after the rule of intellectual engagement, Ikra, the next thing was the rule of spiritual connection, the rituals. And it is the spiritual connection that will lead you to the understanding of the intellectual engagement. Yes, Quran is a book that we, you will read. So it is essentially intellectual. But the understanding of it is not cognitive. It's not something uh, based on your brain. Even if you know Arabic very well, you will still not understand the Quran because the Quran uses few words uh, targeting your art, your soul. And if your heart or your soul is dirty, the Quran will not find entrance into it. So it is not targeting your brain. That's why Allah asked the Jews, "Atamuruna nasa bilber, watansauna anfusaku, wa antun tatlun al kitab, afalat akilu." Will you command people to do good and you forget to do it yourself? And you read the book, you can do the tilawat al kitab. Are you not intelligent? In other words, it isn't a big deal to be brilliant. So brilliant as to memorize the rules, to memorize the Quran. That is brilliance. But being intelligent means accepting the laws of what you know and imbibing, using, actualizing, operationalizing it in your life for your own benefit. But whoever has no faith, we not find faith materials funny at all. Your brain will tell you, what is this now? What is this? Why, for example, did Allah ask us to fast? And why fasting, no food, no drink, no sex with your wife? Is he going to eat our food? Are we dedicating our lunch, which is the basic meal we miss during fasting? Have it? We take breakfast early and we fast forward dinner. Uh, so we take breakfast early, we take dinner early. We only eat lunch. Even, even, even with only one meal that we miss during fasting, shaitan makes it difficult. Makes you feel that this is your life. So you are missing out. At least only one meal, lunch, 
It's not your life. It's not. It's just that Shaitan knows the implication. And then you are not going to have conjugal relationship with your own spouse. Is Allah going to engage your spouse at that time? Is he going to eat your food? And then, is he everybody that does it during the day? But well, Shaitan will make you feel that ah, this is serious. Ah, which kind of restriction is this? Whereas outside Ramadan, you don't do it uh, during the day. Uh, majority of human beings don't do it during the day, except those who commit zina. So if it is your spouse, you won't have time. If it is your girlfriend a, or a prostitute, you won't have time during the night. So Allah is telling you, stop committing zina during one month. Just one month. Don't commit zina. And if it is your wife, uh, she's, she's available for you during the night. But Shaitan we will ask you, what is this for? What is this for? Why do we have to refrain from eating our food and then uh, enjoying our spouses? And only your faith will make you understand that there is nothing better than it. So what is it that we want to read this evening? We want to read about the connection between faith and social habits. The connection between faith and social habits. A particular social habit that does not spiritually go with consistent daily ritual, salat. It was a social habit. It is still a social habit today. That is alcoholism. Alcoholism. How did Allah wonderfully stop alcoholism among drunkards? Muslims were drunkards like any other person. They became Muslims. They were still drinking their beer. They were still drinking alcohol like any other person. And the Lord knew that it was going to be difficult for them to abandon it just like that. So he established Salat. They started enjoying Salat. Salat became a, social, a spiritual social habit, a, a connect, um, a bond. You know, they would come together, shoulder to shoulder, foot to foot, you know, and then it will, re it will remove inequality. Salat will level everybody. So you have access to your leaders. Leaders have access to the followers in the mosque. The leader is the imam. So Salat became everything, a social, political, intellectual, and mystical, spiritual platform for bonding. It also provides opportunity for census so that you know how many you are in a community so that the imam will be able to identify the absentees and then go after them to look at their welfare. It is also a platform for social welfare. Somebody is in need, he will definitely come to pray. And if his, his welfare is so bad, maybe he has health challenges, he has economic challenges, he's owing, and um, he has no clothes on. And so it becomes so bad that he can't come, the man will go after him. And where is this poor man? He used to be at this corner. The man will go and find him out. Did he travel? So it provides opportunity for census, for enumeration, for social engineering, for constructive engagement of the other people. It becomes a contrast subculture. Everybody loved to belong to that brotherhood, to, to participate in the solidarity, to contribute to the bond and fraternity. 
uh, among the Muslim community. Allah now wanted to link it with banning of alcoholism, a social habit that does not go with spiritualism. Somebody who is an alcoholic would definitely not be a good citizen. It will not be a good product of a society. It cannot possibly create peace in the society. Then why is he praying? Prayer will tanaa and al fashai wal munka. Wala dikuru la akbar wal yalam matas naum. Prayer will keep you away from fasha, shameful deed, indecent behavior, and munka, and objectionable behavior. Now, alcoholism is an objectionable behavior. It's munka. So, how can you combine uh, alcoholism, which is fasha and munka, with salat that should prevent you from fasha and munka? Allah says, Ya ayyuhaladina amun, oh you will believe. La tarkabu, la takrabu salata, wa antum sukara. Do not approach salat while you are intoxicated. Atta ta'alamu ma takulun until you know what you say. It was said that some sahaba will be praying and then be reciting poem. From Quran, they're going to poetry. They will be mis reciting the Quran as a result of intoxication. So Allah says, don't go and pray until you know what you are saying. At the same rate, the prophet now added to it that if you take a pin or needle to touch alcohol and you take a drop from a dark pin into your mouth, Allah will not accept your prayer for 40 days. Can you imagine? And what happens if you die within 40 days? So this is the way the prophet assisted the Muslims. And this is the first, the second ordinance against alcoholism. The first one was when they asked the prophet about Ham. Allah says, alcohol, there's a great deal of evil in it, from an nurse and some advantages to men. But the evil is, is more than more grievous than the than the unfunny, than the benefit. This is the second. Don't go. Don't go and pray until you know what you are saying, until the alcoholism intoxicant clears from your face and your heart and your body. The third one is don't ever touch it. Don't ever drink alcohol. They were still drinking. So, wala Juluban, illa abil is sabil, tasilu, and do not, do not go to pray under two conditions. One, when you are intoxicated or until you know what you're saying. Two, when you are junu, when you have just um, had sexual intercourse with your spouse. Now, those who now commit zina, how will they bath? How would they, how would they do gusnu? If a woman commits zina, will she take gusnu in the house of the man? Or come back to her husband's house and do gusnu? If a man commits it, how will the wife take it if he comes back home and wants to come, uh, perform gusnu? And when exactly can a man commit zina and take gusnu? to observe the salat, except if he commits zina overnight. Because zina is not committable in the morning. You want to go to work, no? To get money to commit zina. So 
The only long period is between Subway and Zoom. So you, you can't commit Zina. The Arabs had the habit of doing siesta between Zoom and Asu. They had that habit, it became Sunni. So do siesta between Zoom and Asu. So you can't commit Zina that time. If you do it with your wife, with your spouse, then you know that you just take Gusnu in the house and then go for Astro. So it is another smart way of stopping people from committing Zina. Because when you are Junu, when you have conjugal relationship, you must take Gusnu. So Allah says, don't do it until you have taken Gusnu. And you you're not likely to have long period because there, this is the period of Askar or this is the period of pleasure between Astri and Mandu is also another long interval. And there is no long interval between Mogri and Isha. And then whatever pleasure you have between Mogri and Isha, I can wait until after Isha. So you cannot go and pray when you are Junub, when you have just had conjugal relationship until you have washed the whole of your body. And Allah now says, why could you murder our Allah suffer? However, if you are sick or on a journey, or you just come back from the privy, you know, you contacted women and you have no water. Then Allah says, Allah must nisa, or you contacted women, or you have uh, sexual intercourse with your wife or your husband, and there is no water, and you want to pray. Falam there is no water. Fatayamamu, then do tayamamu. This is where faith attacks brain. We can understand water. You use water to wash death. On your body. When that you have just no water, use dust. Does it, does it make sense? And you are going to rub only two parts of your body. And Allah explains everything. So he don't take you back. Seek clean. Um, seek clean out and wipe over your faces and your hand. Look for clean Sa'idan Tayyiba. Use for look for clean art. From Saubi Uju Ikum Waidikum. Just wipe your face and your hand. Your face is your personality. And every useful um, nerve concentrates on your face, including the one that has to do with sex. On your face. Your face con contains your eyes, the king of your body, your nose, through which you breathe, your mouth, through which you eat and talk, and your ears, through which you hear. Your face is your head, your head is yourself. Now just swap your face, and your hand is your strength. Whatever happens to you, you use your hand to cause it. You use your hand to walk, you use your hand to earn. I tell her where any key turn it or when love it to her and she and so on and so forth. And I says, why just these two places? I'm sorry, we won't be able to finish this ayah today. So Allah says, and Allah is ever pardoning, forgiving. In Allah can afu one gofura, Allah is ever pardoning, ever forgiving. So this is the way the Prophet Islam now uh, teaches us how to do the tayamu. Strike your hands on the earth and then shake it off and then pass the palm of each of the back of the other and then rub your face and your arm. And that's all. You just rub your face and your arm. And that's all. 
and your perform ablution, even if you are Junub. So Allah now prohibits us from approaching prayer when drunk or Junub, and then gives us the opportunity to do Tayyamum when we are Junub or we are from the privy. And it doesn't make immediate sense. Allah forbid his believing servants from praying while drunk because a drunk person does not know the meaning of what he's saying in that state. He forbid them from attending the masjid while sexually impure, except when one is just passing through the masjid from one door to another. This ayah was revealed before alcohol consumption was completely prohibited as evident by the hadith that you have mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, in that hadith, Rasulullah recited this ayah to Umar, who said, Oh Allah, explain the ruling about Ham in a plain manner when Allah uh, gives the first ayah that, that I cited, that um, there is manafi, there is um, benefit, but the evil overrides the benefit. Umar was not happy. He said, oh Allah, explain the ruling about Khamru for us in a plain manner. When this ayah, ayah 43 of Surah to Nisa was revealed, the prophet recited it to Umar. He still said, oh Allah, explain the ruling about Khamru for us in a plain manner. They were still drinking. Then Umar had Firasha. He had foresight, he had, he had karamat, and um, so Umar knew that Hamru, I mean intoxicant, is evil. But he's not a prophet. And the president was not going to argue with Allah. And he wanted Allah to ban it. This is one of the occasions when Allah agreed with Umar. Umar was not happy, even with this second one. Then after that, they will not drink alcohol close to the time of prayer. Then Allah says, Ya Yaladina Manu. Alcohol, gambling, and sub, aslam are an abomination of shaitans and the world. So avoid that in order that you may be successful. I am 90 of Surah Al Ma'idah. And Allah. In ayah 91, Allah ends the conversation with a question. So will you not then abstain? And Prof will say, you see now, what will you say? You see now, it is rhetoric. He says every part of the Quran is rhetoric. Do you agree? <laughs> Umar said, we abstain, we abstain. When Allah says, will you not abstain? Umar was so happy. Umar said, we abstain, we abstain. So Allah says, don't approach Salat when you are in a drunken state until you know what you're saying at the time of the prayer. And this, uh, this, the Prophet Sallallahu will have somebody to proclaim at the time of prayer. Let not any drunk person approach the prayer. Let not any drunk person approach the prayer, according to Abu Daud. What was the reason for the revelation of this ayah? Ibn Abi Atim has recorded some reports about the incident of his revelation. Sad said, four ayat were revealed concerning me. A man from Dansar once made some food and invited some Ajirin and Ansar men to come and eat. And we ate and drank until we became intoxicated. Then we boasted about our status. You know, and they were Muslims, but they were still drinking. Allah had not banned them from drinking. So they went to a party. They, they went to a banquet to which they were invited. They drank alcohol on top of food. And they started talking about their status. Then a man had a camel's bone and injured Sash's nose, which was curled 
ever since. This occurred before Kamru was prohibited. Allah returned in V. La takrabu salata wantum sukara. Do not go to prayer when you are drunk. Another reason, according to Nabi Atim, is that Ali bin Abi Talib said, Abdurrahman Auf made some food to which he invited us and served some alcohol to drink. When we became intoxicated and the time for prayer came, they asked someone to lead us in prayer. He recited, Kul ya ayyul kafirun. La ta'buduna mola. Mola Abudun. So he, he Jabaru the Surah Al Kafirun. The, oh, yeah, who disbelieve? Do not worship that which you worship. Well, we worship that which you worship. So he, he juggled the Surah. Then Allah revealed, Ya Yaladinam, La Takrabu Salatu Wantu Sukara, Atta Talamuma Tal Takulun. Oh, yeah, we believe. Do not approach Salat when you are in a drunken state until you know what you are saying. Uh, Allah says, Until you know what you are saying. This is the best description for when one is intoxicated. That is when, that is when he does not know the meaning of what he is saying. When a person is drunk, he makes mistakes in the recitation and will not be able to be humble during the prayer. Um, another idea says, if you feel sleepy while praying, you should go and sleep because you may not know the meaning of what you are saying. This hadith is in Bukhari. And another narration, it was said that if you feel sleepy while praying, leave the prayer and go and sleep for a while. And that is Tajud. Uh, because you're not likely to feel sleepy during Zoom because you are likely to be observing it in congregation. So if you, you're feeling sleepy, at least you're not likely to sleep while standing. And if you do, when the Imam goes to Ruku, you have to go to Ruku. Then the sleep will leave you for a while. Well, I do not Now, while in Junub, while you are sexually impure, except while passing through, until you wash your body. In other words, don't go to mosque, except that you are passing through the mosque. Don't go and pray when you are Junub, except when you're just passing through the mosque. So many people explain it that way. When some men from the Ansar, whose doors literally opened into the masjid were sexually impure and they did not have water, their only way to get water was to pass through the masjid. So Allah sent them, Wala junaban ila abiris sabil. Not when you are junub, except if you are passing through the mosque. Don't come and pray. What supports this statement by Yezid bin Abi Ab Habib, radiallahu anhu, is that Bukhari reported in the Sahih that this messenger says, close all the small doors in this masjid, except that of Abu Bakr. This is what the prophet commanded at the end of his life, knowing that Abu Bakr will be the Khalifa after him, and that he will need to enter the masjid on numerous occasions to manage the important affairs of the Muslims. Yet, the messenger of Allah commanded that all the small doors that open into the masjid be closed, except that of Abu Bakr. Some of the Sunnah compilers recorded that the prophet said, only Ali's door should remain open, but this is an error. What is in the Sahih is only Abu Bakr's door. That is the correct one. In the Sahih, Muslim recorded that Aisha said, the Muslim of Allah said to me, bring me the garment from the masjid. And I said, I have my period. I am menstruating. He said, your period is not in your hand. In other words, like the menstruating woman, like the Junub uh, man or woman, um, they can enter mosque, they will only not pray. This addition indicates that the woman is allowed to pass through the masjid during menses or postnatal bleeding. Wallahu alam. Then Allah described it to Yaman. Allah says, 
وإن كنتم مرضى أو على سفر أو جاء أحد منكم من الجائز أو لابستم النساء نساء 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 أها فلم تجد ماء فتيمموا صعيدا طيبا and if you are ill on a journey or you come close you come back from toilet um the yoruba you say ilega to balashiga it is from this arabic word gai so they call toilet toileting iga gai just like they call husband bali bal uh yoruba is um many percentage um, Arabic. Uh, uh, when you touch women, but you do not find water, perform tayamu with clean out. As for the type of illness which will allow tayamu, it is an illness that one fears will be aggravated by using water, which could be de detrimental to a part of the body, and when doing so, will prolong the illness. Some scholars say that any type of illness any type of illness at all warrants the yaman because of the general indications of the eye. Uh, some of the time when you have ordinary fever, water will be, will be too difficult for you to interact with. It will, it will pepper your body. Uh, permit me to use that word. You know we are on strike, so we don't know book when we are on strike. All right. Um, how Allah suffering or on a journey. As for traveling on a journey, it is known regardless of its length that if there is no water and you're on a journey and it's time for prayer, do tayamum. And you come from the guys. The guys is literally the flat land, and this part of that refers to the minor impurity. Allah said, How you You touch women. You have instance in an in the of Surah Al Baqarah. When Tala to to move unna, me kabla anta masu unna. Kad farad tum la unna farida. Fanis fuma farad. Meaning, if you divorce women before you touch them, touching them here means before you have sexual intercourse with them. So there will be no, or before you pay their dowry, then you will you will pay half of the dowry. So Allah says in Surah al Azab 2, um, he used the same word or wordings. So Allah says, when you have sexual intercourse and there is no water, you should do tayammum. In the Sayyid, it is recorded that Imran bin Hussein said, a last messenger saw a person sitting away from the people and not praying with them. He asked him, oh, so, so, and so, what prevented you from offering the prayer with the people? Are you not a Muslim? He replied, yes, oh, a last messenger. I'm Julub, and there is no water. The prophet said, um, perform tayammu with clean heart, and that will be sufficient for you. The linguistic meaning of tayammu is to intend is to intend. As Arab says, may Allah tayam makaka, tayam mamaka, may Allah direct at you, is care. Clean art means dust. In the Sahih Muslim recorded that Udayf Abun Yemen said that the messenger of Allah said, we were given preference over people in three things. One, our lives in prayer were arranged in rows to resemble the rows of the angels. Two, all of the earth was made a masjid for us. And three, his dust was made clean for us when there is no water. The messenger mentioned the favor of making dust a purifier for us. And if there were any other substance to replace it for a tayamun, we would have mentioned it. But this is an opinion. Because there are other things. You can use stone um, and so on. Uh, in another hadith, the problem was correct to have said, clean as is pure for the Muslim, even if he does not find water for 10 years. 
when he finds water, let him use it for his skin, for this is better. Allah says, rub your face and arm. This indicates that yam is a street, is a substitute for normal ablution, not that it involves clean the parts that normal ablution will clean. Therefore, it is sufficient in Tayamun to just wipe the face and hands as the consensus concurs. The face and hands are wiped with one strike on the sand. In this case, as Imam Ahmed recorded, Umar said to somebody who came to him and asked him, I am Junub, and there is no water. He said, do not pray. Ahmed said, do you not remember each of the faithful that you and I were on a military expedition when we became Junub and did not find water. You did not pray. But I rolled myself in the sand and then prayed. When we went back to the prophet, we mentioned to him what had happened. And he said, this will have been sufficient for you. And the prophet stroked his hand on the earth once, blew it, blew into it, and wiped his face and hand. He taught him how to do Tayamu. Now instead of rolling, in the earth. This is what you should have done. Place your hand on the dust, strike it, wipe your face and your hand. The Muslim Umar rather than all other nations was favored with the allowance of Tayamun. It is also recorded in the Sahihain that Jabir ibn Abdullah said that the Messenger of Allah said, I have been given five things which were not given to any prophet before me. Allah made me victorious with fright that covers a month's distance. Two, the earth has been made for me and my followers a place for praying and an object to perform purification. Therefore, let my followers pray wherever the term of prayer is due and another narration, he will have his means of purity and his masjid. The spoils of war have been made lawful for me and it was not made so for anyone else before me. For I have been given the right of intercession on the day of resurrection. Every prophet used to be sent to his nation, finally, exclusively, but I have been sent to all mankind. And um, these are these have also been cited previously. So Allah says, He is often pardoning or forgiving, forgiving, meaning a part of the pardoning and forgiving is that. He allows you to use tayamun and to pray after using it when there is no water. Where's the no water to make things easy for you? This ayah sanctifies the position of the prayer. It's been too sacred than to be performed in a deficient manner, like in a state of drunkenness until one becomes aware of what one is saying or sexually impure until some, one has taken the gusli or after answering the call of nature, until you have cleaned yourself with water. There are exceptions when one is eat or when there is no water. In this case, Allah allows us to use Tayamun out of his mercy and kindness for his servant and to facilitate them. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Um, we want to also give us the reason for the revelation of the aspect of Tayamun. Aisha radiallahu anha reported that they set out with Allah's messenger on one of his journeys until we reach al baida where a necklace of mine was broken and then lost. Rasul Islam stayed there to search for it, and so did the people along with him. There was no water source or any water with them at that place. So the people went to Bakri Siddiq and said, don't you see what Aisha has done? She has made Allah's messenger and the people stay where there is no water, and they have no water to, to pray. Can you imagine? That they were on a journey. Aisha was with them, with, uh, with her husband, the Prophet Sallallahu and she lost her necklace. And the husband, a prophet of a man, stayed there looking for necklace that his wife lost and the time of prayer came. And there is no way to trust the Muslims. They went to our father and said, see what your daughter has caused now. He made the prophet, he delayed the prophet. He made him look for a necklace. 
until the time of prayer has come. See the fitness your daughter is causing. Ordinarily, Abaka felt bad. He felt really, really bad. Now, what is this girl going to cause? What kind of embarrassment is this? My daughter causing the whole congregation, the whole woman. So he came while a last messenger was sleeping with his head on my thigh. He said to me, you have detained the last messenger and the people where there is no water and they have no water with them. So he admonished me and said what Allah wished him to say and eat me on my flank with his hand. Abubakar became angry. So he eat his daughter. Allah's messenger got up when dawn broke and there was no water. So Allah revealed the ayahs of Tayyamun and they all performed Tayyamun. Usai ibn Uder said, one of these things is burning. Maybe it's the fan. It's not the fan first. Usai ibn Uder said, oh, the family of Abu Bakri, this is not the first blessing from you. Can you imagine? The same people that went to harass Abu Bakr, that his daughter has caused action. They won't be able to pray because there is no water and she caused it. When Allah now revealed Tayamu and asked them to do Tayamu, they now went back to say, this is not the first time your daughter or your family has been a source of blessing to the woman. Then the camel on which I was riding was moved moved from his place and the necklace was found under it. So um, this is the end of um, the ayah. And let's see whether Sheikh is here. I tried reaching out to him, I couldn't. Um, let's stop here. I want to listen to you too. And um, I want to learn from you too, before we close this conversation. Allah connects prayer with gradual abolition of intoxicants. Allah also forbid us from going to mosque to pray when we are junub and we have minor impurity, we just visited the toilet and um, Allah now liberalized the purification for us through Tayammum. Then it is very interesting that Tayammum is dust. Ordinarily, if there is dust on your body, you use water to clean it. But Allah says, we are there is no what I use dust. Is it not interesting? You will accept this only with faith. But after accepting it, Allah will open your heart and enlighten you that you are from the dust. And mystically, when you add dust to dust, you strengthen it. You are also from water. And mystically, when you wash your, the, the critical part of your body with water, which is your source, you strengthen it mystically. And then look at the body, the parts of the body that we wash. Your face is your personality, like I said before, and your hand is your strength. And there is no part of the body that does not have mystical implication. The hand, apart from washing your hand with water and or rubbing it with dust, your hand also consists of all, all the nerve ends. All the nerve ends are in your extremities, your hand and your feet, and your feet. And there is no part of your body that is not connected with the nerve ends in your hands and your feet. That's why when somebody is dying, maybe you have high fever and the whole of your body is out. To know that you are in a critical condition your arms and your legs will be cold. Meaning you are beginning to die. You don't die from the body. The last part of your body that dies is your heart. You start dying from your extremities. 
So there is power in the extremities, in your hand and your leg. So you use water towards the hand or when you love it to run any shape. Then you wash your mouth. And on the and laughing, your mouth is you. Then you can, Allah has advised you to use your mouth to repair your deed. What you use your hand to cause, use your mouth to repair it. Sometimes, what good you have done with your hand, you can use your mouth to destroy it. Sometimes. So, Allah has told us so much about ourselves. Allah says, Takullah wa kulu kaulan sadida. Fear Allah and say words straight to the point. What will he do? You sneak in akum It will repair your deeds. We are lakum the nubakum. And it will be a means of forgiveness of your sin. Woman, you think Allah Rasulah wa kodifas a thousand azim. Whoever follows Allah and his messenger, he has achieved great achievement. What is Allah telling you? That there is power in your mouth. A bad person who is a monophic will use his mouth to, you know, to project himself as a good person. A monophic does not say la Allah la ilaha ilaha. He said la ilaha ilaha Allah like you. What is he doing? He's using his mouth to belong to you, but his heart does not belong. Only Allah knows. So you use your hand to cause trouble for yourself. And like Allah says, there is no musiba. Ma mi musiba tila, tila, what? Except what you say. Uh huh. I didn't quite get it. Ustas, osapa ustas no dimbi. Ma asaba mi musiba ti fabi ma kasaba ti aidi kum wayafu an kasib. There is no musiba. That happens to you. You use your hand. So when we start, which we use to cause trouble for yourself, then you proceed with the mouth, which you can use to repair it. Then you sniff. Uh, the English people do not have this culture and this uh, mystical belief. Imunika, the nose is wicked. He does not perceive the smell of a wrongdoer, of a wicked person. So your nose is critical in your body. It's critical to your well-being. So use water, your source, to sniff in and sniff out. Then your face is your personality. Everything about you is concentrated on your head. And your head, your face is the expression of your head. Everybody has some kind of head but it is the face that distinguishes everybody. So you have your nose, your mouth, your eyes, your ears, and this is where you wash, you know? And mystically too, some of these places could be used to identify you. Like I've said somewhere else some time ago, your hand consists of this, uh, mystical marks that are just permanent marks about your destiny and about yourself. You cannot read it. And it's different from any other place. And even your child, even twins, your thumb, you know, you know, the thumb print is not the same. No two people, even if they're identical to you, their thumb printing will be different. And it's an identification marker. For those who have mystical power, magical power, they can use your hand. So then even today, in intelligence and security, they can use your hand to identify you. That's why they use gloves. So Allah says, protect your hand. Protect yourself by washing the hand of trouble. You remember we say, I wash my hand off. You know, wash it off. Then, you, you now wash 
your your arm. When you use your arm, this is your strength. And this is your capacity. Then your, you wipe your head, your ear. Only no more Ori lo mo bi tun ba ese re olorun si mo bi ti ori nbe ese re the leg the head follows the leg the leg carries the head and your head the concept of ori in your mythology is a whole world is a whole world it is your personal god it is your spirit is your korin is your god is you and then when Yorubas begin to talk about Ori, Ori me ogbabode, Ori lo ni she, Ori, Ori la babo, kafo sale, Ori yomi, Ori ba mi she, Ori la fi me ron la wo. Ori, 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 this Ori is, is an old world. The land knows more than the Yorubas. So wipe it. Wipe it backward. The sooner is wipe it forward. Then your leg. Your man chilete. Your man to jule male. Your man tese your male. Il est de yo. Are are you the guru? In your de yo shubu. In your de le shubu come out did mo. Eh, but when you label, you label. Unfortunately, you can't use English to explain this. It won't make sense. Far far. English is a fabricated uh, language now. Uh, professor knows now. It's a makeshift language now. It's a pigeon. It's pigeon French. Pigeon, pigeon French is a stupid language. Yes, very stupid language. Uh, almost meaningless. Even the grammar is poor among his family. I mean, you can't compare. Kini, what is the Oyibo for Ekule? Ekule, Ekaba, Eku Joko, Eku Simi, Eku Badu. You know, what is the English for all this? Okunkiki, more than 1,000 greetings. More than 1,000 greetings in Yoruba. Ekwele, Erora, Eku, Okuto, Ekwasikoyi. Eku Samani, Eku She, Eku Ashe, Eku Eku Akesi, Eku Akiesi, Eku Afiesi, Eku Dide, Eku 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 Bubu. You know, and it does not mean you die. And uh, English is not a language at all. May Allah save us from poor language. As this is what we discussed today. And if all these are not possible through water, use dust to, to wipe only your face and your hand. It does not mean that other parts are not important, but it means this is the summary of your body. Whoever does not have face does not have a head, so it does not exist. But whoever doesn't have a hand does not have capacity, so it's disabled. So disability is critical in terms of being blind, being deaf, being dumb. All in your head. And the worst of disability is not having hands. When you have hands, you can, you can see, when well, you are crippled, you are not disabled. You can walk because you have eyes to see and you have hands to walk with. So I don't give cripples any money. It's not an excuse to beg. It's only the blind to have excuse to beg. Another person has no excuse to beg. Once you can see, you are a whole and a wholesome human being if you are not lazy. Akulu Kaoleaza was thankfully. Well, like I said, I want to listen to you too. Salam alaikum.
Idris is here. Idris Bangbelu. Nobody is talking. Okay, from inside. Uh, who? Is it time for question and answer? Yes. yes. Contribution, question, and answer. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Mm. That's the purpose of sniffing. When, when you wash your hand and you want to, you know, some opinion in Fiku say you can you can you can wash your mouth and sniff at the same time. So once you know that the smell is not water, it's not good to perform ablution with it. It's not good. It is not water. Because water doesn't have smell, doesn't have taste, it doesn't have color. But if it is from well, and the smell is not um, poisonous, and people drink it, if people drink the water, and you can see that they, they drink it, you can perform ablution. You will rinse your mouth with it if you if you object to it. Just wash your face. Wash your hand, wipe your head, and wash your neck. Wala alam. Another one. Alaikum salam. It's a reduction. Islam is from. Is not from salam. It is from submission. So we have two great uh, ustas in the house. We we only we only linked it to salam. Um, Islam is submission. Uh, Jesus himself said. Those who do not have sword should sell their garments to buy sword. Because I have not come to bring peace. It's ideology. Once you start living within the precinct of an ideology, one that will be, they will ignore you, they will make fun of you, they will resist you, they will attack you, and they want to stop you. And then you're not going to just sit down and say, Look, I'm sorry, I'm no longer interested in this ideology. You have to resist too. And that is why it will tamper with peace at the beginning. And then whoever is not going to make you have peace, you must make him lose peace too. After he has lost his peace, then you have your peace. Uh, and then I'm ready to pay. If you, if you read it in any surah, that Islam is a religion of peace. I'll pay 10,000 I mean, they're, they're likely to pay us all, you know, for February, next week, or this week. They're likely to pay. So don't worry, I'll pay. I have not read it, I have not read it. It's an apologetic way of presenting his story. No, we don't fight. We only fight those who fight us. After Handa, after Fatih Makkah, the prophet led expeditions. After Handa, he, he led exped expeditions against the Jews and drove them come out from Medina Mashallah. Because they had arms and they were going to make life impossible for For Muslims in Medina. So the problem was not engage them and cut them because there was no single shooting of arrow. Allah scared them. So they destroyed their own house with their own hand and left. 
that Allah made the, the property they left to be shared, you know, by the Prophet Islam and the Muslims. So uh, it will ultimately give you peace, right? Uh, peace with God, peace with man. This is what we were told in RK classes. And it's good. But it is not derived from the Quran. And it's not derived from Hadith. Otherwise, it will nullify and neutralize the religion as an ideology. If it's an ideology, it must be the same. ordinary APC, all promises council, and uh, PDP, people destroying people. They, they fight. In order to establish their hegemony and superiority, they cause bloodlet, bloodletting. So, how can you say an ideology as mighty as Islam? Should just make you turn the other cheek. When they slap you, turn the other cheek. We don't turn the other cheek. We avoid being slapped if we cannot slap back. But when we can slap back, you slap me, I slap you. Then after some time, I threaten you with a slap by asking you to keep quiet where you are, or else I will slap you. So, so that I will have peace. So, Let's start from the question from Professor Anurat is as Assalamu alaikum salam Can this rule on alcohol apply to taking sedative? If sedative does not intoxicate, it could be therapeutic. And um, even if certain drugs that can have intoxicating effect are taken as therapy, like uh, codeine, like um, a brufen, like um, certain certain aspect of even cocaine. Uh, there, there are many drugs that, that are used for therapeutic purposes in the hospital. If it is recommended and is applied. and administered by a physician. Then you are violating the rule. Um, who is next? Is he, Abu Faiz, that is, is our next? Yes, Abu Faiz. Yes, sir. Salam alaykum, sir. OK. Good luck. Alaykum salam. Alaykum salam. I can hear you. Yes, we ask Allah to continue to strengthen you for us, sir. sir I, want to, I, want to, I want to ask a question regarding your last statement about giving harms to, um, preferably to the blind. What, 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 in a situation where you hardly find the blind around now, you have more of the cripples and you just felt like doing, giving harms. Can you give to some of these um, junior workers in your place of work, maybe they are, you know, they are, they are cleaners, they are gardeners, they are old. Just to support them in the case where you can't find blind people. Alaikum salam. I'm sorry, I'm very poor in this subject, subject mm. of giving arms, because mm. the way I think, unfortunately, is not popular. My thinking is not popular. What I believe in ch about charity is anybody that asks you, but essentially from your neighborhood. Yeah. Charity to me is best from your neighborhood. So what I do is I put the money in Fisabilila in our mosque. When I want to do Saraka, Put it in the visibly lab bosk. I think we have plans, we have programs for the poor, for the indigent, for the vulnerable. Up in our own mosque there, we also have plans for widows and orphans. So all the categories of people that we should help, we just put your money there, the money will reach them. And then if anybody comes to my mosque to beg, then we can give him. That will be Sa'i, the person that asked. But for me to go, to be going on the street, once in a while I do it, but 
I don't believe it is Saraka to give professional beggars because it's their job. They have gone to the market, so I think, but to collect the. Other things that I don't wish to say about this challenge. As for giving junior workers, the, the people you know, whether they are your clothes off your body and give someone to make him know that this is not an abandoned clothes, this is not old clothes. This clothes I don't wear anymore. You know, I know somebody who did it. He said yes. Do so the person went inside, pulled the cloth off, he folded it, and gave it to him. He said, "I've been looking for somebody who will still be wearing this cloth. I like to see it." So he gave the cloth out, and then, that's that's excellent. That's excellent. Somebody comes here, says, "I'm not asking for somebody who will go inside, take." His own food, even if the food is no food, and give the person. And if he has one, and you will not ask which religion the person is doing. So, anybody that asks for food, we get food. Food is the best sadaka. It's the best sadaka. Money is not as good. It comes second. Because when you feed, you clothe. Once somebody eats and is clothed, he said, no, party don't finish. Or he give somebody money, he can invest it. Yeah? Somebody who is asking for money is not hungry. He needs the money for something else. But somebody who is really poor will ask for food. And somebody who is not hungry is not poor. Maybe better no share. Share push Hello, Alan. No bad. Yes. The same thing with your money you give to beggars. That is what I said I didn't want to say. I mean, begging is a syndicate. They have those who are the proprietors of this business. If you go and stay, you will see the kind of vehicle that will bring them. And shortly before my grip, Go there, you will see the vehicle that will take them. And what they do with your money, you shouldn't know. So, you are giving clothes to some. What will you do with your clothes? Will he use your clothes? So you clothes, don't give Saraka to a stranger. Except somebody who says he's hungry. And they're not usually strangers, although they don't live in my environment. So when somebody says he's hungry, I take food now. Whatever you want to do with food, go and do it. It's Saraka. But I don't give money to strangers. Uh, somebody is on WhatsApp, I don't know him. And I start, even this iftar, I don't do it. I don't do iftar. Uh, I don't invite people to my house for iftar too. I don't do iftar, I don't donate for iftar because I know that some people use it as business. Every Ramadan, it is, it is business. They collect your money, collect your food stuff and sell. Collect your money and share. And they, they say they are doing iftar. 
and I knew this since 1992. Even the time that I filmed is something else. You just see yourself in Sudan, see yourself in Saudi Arabia as one of the indigent people that some mischievous people feed 30 days in Ramadan. They gather you, you, uh, you remember, they gathered us as uh, Abiola in Abel Kuta in 1992. And they said they were doing iftar. Only for us to see ourselves in Sudan. That we are poor people that they were feeding every day of Ramadan. And uh, they, they, they filmed us. Since day, like Je. Yeah, to, uh, it doesn't invite the oh, it's okay. Your mosque now, it's yourself. It's Nafsi Nafsi. We also do iftar in our mosque. In phase one, we do it. Uh, uh, our children, most most of them, prefer their kamu. I was in the West in Kafa every day of uh, Ramadan. They are not blessed and, and um, reward those. Who are in charge? Well, now well, this is this is the immediate. If every community takes care of its poor people, will anybody take by from from outside? The, the, if, they, if they are not in your environment, it's none of your business. It's none of your business. Ah, are you sure that he's in that thing? Do you know him? Anybody can come walk up to you and tell any lie against himself. How will you confirm? Is salt. Happen. Yeah, Doctor. Welcome to the cartoon. Well, uh, let me start by saying that well, you have um, acknowledged your, I don't want to say inadequacy when it comes to issue of Sadako, because the, your opinion, so to say, um, is as respectable as they are, they are very debatable. Yeah. Uh, the issue of Sadako is yeah. indeed a very Complex. Brother, me. I think I'm the one on the floor, please. Um, very socially intricate and a subjective issue. And because of its subjectivity, it is sometimes very difficult to rationalize. Um, I succumb to the idea that um, the best other call should be to people you know and people who, um, who you can identify. Because the essence of Sodako, apart from being poverty elevation, it is people you know, you can identify with. I also did not see the rationale in going out to help people you don't know when people you know are actually suffering. And then um, we also go about begging. Um, that, uh, however, it does not preclude that sometimes we run into situation where we find people who genuinely or wrongly seem to have problem we cannot but assist. I am aware of people who are into business of begging. Um, people who, when they collect this money, they sell to ritual makers, ritual list for whatever thing. So that's why I think it is people should be very careful in giving money, especially to this so-called professional beggar who you don't know. I think they seem to be very popular in our places. Uh, may Allah save us. The second issue I want to address has to do with issue of Islam as peace. Um, well, to a large extent, I succumb to the other that Islam is a peace because peace is not necessarily absence of war. Um, it is, um, it is, it is not, the fact that we say we live in peace does not mean an absence of war. It is to give 
live and let us live. That is the only way to guarantee peace. And um, the relationship between uh, Islam as a religion of peace and Islam as ideologue and submission is that it is a peace that we will get through submission. Um, that uh, I want to say, but the most interesting part to me uh, in this step today is the issue of the so-called uh, taboo that you started with. Um, where people preserve a number of things you seen what we call taboo, the issue of afforestation and deforestation, the concept of Igoru uh, in Yoruba land, I think it's um, very, very interesting because the Yoruba, um, most of what they shout today, you call uh, sustainability, are things that are actually inherent in this concept of Yoruba, where they preserve a number of things using scary tales and taboos. When we were young, we were told not to sit on a mortar. Of course, it is reasonable if a child sits on mother, he can pee or he can wee there. And that is what you used to eat. And we're told that if you sit on mother, you will have um, boils around your buttock or bum. And you don't also sit, sit inside the um, Odo, I don't know the English for Odo, I'm sorry. Uh, is it mother? I don't know. Okay, mother. The first one I was talking about is the uh, law that you don't sit on. So you don't also sit on mortar too. These are, I think, a good concept of hygienic that the Yoruba sort of um, mystifies, so to say, to scare away the little children. You don't cut your nail at night. You don't, if I were able to that, you don't bath at night and so on and so forth. Um, but a number of them are very good. Actually, the issue of this deforestation. I can also imagine that if there is not that concept, virtually every forest in my town will have uh, been um, something else. But there is that fear that children, women should not go to Igboru. And this place were preserved the way they are even up to today. Uh, but of course, people are coming to know that there is nothing like uh, any Oru anywhere. Uh, and so I've been daring to go there. But I think, I don't know what religion will say about that, but I don't see it as a very wrong um, concept, given the fact that... Um, that you lost your to, voice. Okay. Given the fact that we have to help us preserve our natural environment, which is one of the things I think Islam is also interested in preserving. So um, may Allah continue to bless our ancestor. May he grant us the understanding and the will with that to be able to do better. Jazakumullah khairan, sir. Wa iyaak ya imam. Ya Idris, you are likely to be the last person to make a comment. You are the last one up. Now, as I'm going to talk to now, I'm um, Bimo I want to believe you are um, your health has improved and um, you are better now. May Allah continue to grant you Shifa, Rahmatika, Ya Allah, and every one of us. I mean, um, La Diori or arms giving. More personally, I still have some things I don't understand about Sarah in, 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 in comparison to arms giving. Like the Sarati and one Baba, one man say, Now I go do the little bar, oh, say, eh, oh, 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 at the Agbado, I mean, Agbado at the, oh, which Agbado and Agbo, I say, what's the little, one like everybody, J and the likes. Kini, I want to call you, say, Bassini, say, Pelessin, at the key one, you want to say, prayer, I do call, I want to find when you want to Yes, I know that um, we can actually slaughter for a lie, anyways. But kini uh, awo kini efirni link mo wipe o manje ki a drag ba. Please speak English, please speak English, please speak English, please. A lot of people don't understand your language. Um, let me speak in my car. Like I think, okay, no problems. So I'm talking about. I don't know how how to say that Sarah in English, anyways. But then uh, I think I have been able to express an imam could um, assist better in 
shedding more light as in, in in putting it in proper perspective, probably in English. That's one. The number two is I also appreciate one thing about um the Sababu Nusul of the um Tayamum, which is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taking very serious one of the minutest of things of the properties of his wives. So I think that also should, uh, should be something to take home for men too. Even though me, I am inexperienced anyways. And um, uh, right, lastly, me, I think I'm very, very lastly more. So those are the little things I want to raise. Salam alaikum to alaikum salam I didn't quite get your last point, but I think I get your first point. That is uh, the relationship between the Sarah, Sadaka that um, our fathers used to do uh, from a new perspective. Uh, well, what we didn't appreciate in our fathers was the deep ikma with which they preached and practiced Islam. Uh, when we were growing, we, we just saw it as funny things, uh, things that were crude, they were very close to So Kufru, uh, uh, but I didn't know. Even the emperor, and two is fairly global, uh, and two that it is um, Tira did most of these juju in the north. We call liar. Go, you don't know. Nobody from the north. Yeah, you are even from the north. Okay, we call it liar in the north here. Yeah. Some of these things had to be done to replace some powerful juju and uh, mystical practices among the kufar then. Now, if, if you just say you are going to pray for them, they're not likely to have confidence in the prayer. So when you say, do sadaka, so sadaka with food, uh, agbo, um, agbado, all the rest of them, all these items, they were close to the items which they, they were doing um, ebo, um, um, a tutu. At that time, like uh, beans uh, was used, suspected that it belonged to a minute. They will a veggie. And the rest of them. Um, it is, they now turned it into sadaka of food. And at any rate, when you do sadaka after prayer, it becomes efficacious. It becomes efficacious. I don't know whether they fabricated their ideas, but I, I see a lot of sense in it that you can even change your. Uh, I see some sense in it. Uh, somebody who has prayed will feel it. You never saw that destiny. So if something that you fear eventually did not happen, your faith will go back to your, to your prayer and the sadaka. So sadaka it is that our fathers use ikma, you know, to replace with, uh, with a tutu and um, ebo, Irubo etutu and so on. That is why you will hear Magbesara Rekoja Masalasi. When the Sara goes beyond the masjid, then it goes to the Orita. And while the Babalawo and the Onisha Guada Ushe and so on, we do his own etutu outside at the junction. Therefore, we do his own ikpese inside the house. At the beginning, it was not a direct replacement with Ebo, with uh, sacrifice. Um, it was Ikma. But later, Shaitan, uh, you know, intervened and then manipulated the Malam to do exactly what the Babalawo was doing. They always gave them incantation and they gave them the, the Isab, which is a direct substitute for Ifa, because it is also 16. 
and it has binary function, like computer. You know, we thank God there's a computer guru here. So, and it works with sand, silicon, which is, which is glass and sand. You know, and then the, the selection and, and action is exactly what computer. Since today are robotics. I'm not saying anything strange in Yoruba science. So nobody is talking anymore. We can close. Please, I don't close you. Don't close, don't close. Um, this uh, issue, um, there's this thing we also learned from our fathers. As one, as one of those things that I, that I also know that is put, or is it, it's like a neutralizer, is them praying inside salt, praying inside um, the water content of coconut and the likes. Uh, and uh, I think there are some mystic, mystical secrets behind those things, which uh, yeah, far no power. But me, I am just a, a, a person that doesn't throw all those things away, except I have reasons, basic reasons to throw them away. I just want to look and learn more about them before saying outrightly that they are wrong. Salam alaikum. Thank you very much. Our problem is all these things that we are asking questions about, if the Chinese or the Europeans bring them to us, we will accept without question. They only need to tell you that um, there is, the water of coconut is alkaline. Then you start looking for it. Once they tell you it is medicinal, you start looking for it. But when our fathers use their wisdom to pray inside salt, is salt not medicine, it has iodine and other components, all the other medicinal components. Now they use their wisdom to pray into it before they administer it, because they knew that if there is no prayer, there will be no faith. And they were simply mani manipulating our faith. Today, we don't faith. They give us gene to work with and we accept it because they didn't call it gene. It's semantic manipulation. They call it artificial intelligence. But this is computer guru. Do, do you know people call it gene? Genie? They call it gene, the name, go, 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 genie. And they misbehave like any gene will misbehave. And once you, you fictionalize, you animate genes and put humans, they misbehave. Despite the computer programming, the language, everything, the precision, there are still mistakes. They still tell you that they are being still like you and they can disobey you and they can do their own. Sometimes you, you find finding for say virus. What is virus? Virus is reaction. See? I mean, virus, you call it virus, but then Virus is reaction from these genes. And then they, they spoil everything. They, they destroy everything. Uh -huh. And then, then you have John Robot that is replicating itself, no, that is reproducing, that is, that is multiplying. So robots are now giving back to robots. You don't know that there's going to be trouble in future. And then people are being asked to supply their faces their personality to attack the robot that will now look like a human being, a real human being. They are not animating. They are not 
borrowing. They are putting real human beings' face on machine. And it is being developed in a military setting. So what's not going to happen in future? But it is because our new gods are the ones giving us these things. If this thing come from, from somewhere in Africa, we are likely to be the first to call it voodoo because they will call it juju. But because it is coming from them, it is not juju. It is science. What is the thing dividing line between magic and science today? What is not magical about science today? Precision agree is pure magic. Deep fake. Deep fake. That they, they will use you without your knowledge. They will make you go and do and say things you have nothing, you know nothing about, and it will be you. And if they want to <laughs> deal with you, you won't have any excuse. Yes, they will provide all the evidences that it is you. What, what have you not been able to use the media to do today? May Allah save us. Let us be open-minded. Idris, let's meet in the evening and do our talim uh, for youth in the evening. 8.30, you are cordially invited. We want to warn Malabu Gaffar not to delay in sending this link. Many people will not know that it is the recurring link. Many people were not here today because they, they, they didn't see the link. Only those who know that it's the same link are here. Please help us against next week. Babana Tako Balmin na ina kanto sami unani. Tuba ali na ina kanto tawa abrohi. Babana zalamu mufisam. In lam katila ma tahami. Mana kuna na mufisam. Mana kula na zuban. This one has been recorded. It's live feed on YouTube and Facebook. If what and others, the rent are short. Love and equality. Salam alaikum, sir. Alaikum salam, my dear daughter. How are you? Fine, sir. How is, how is your beautiful sir, husband? How is your health? We are expecting you in Cuba. Ah, Cuba I couldn't make it, but I was able to meet uh -huh. Ali today. Yes, I saw you. I am